Unfortunately, since I uh, became chair of conference committee, and I can assure you it's nothing to do with me becoming chair of conference committee, each report I've, haven't, I've had to give seems to mention the word security. Uh, once again, we have uh, some additional security that we never used to have before we were in government. Uh, given the events of this week, one thing I would suggest to everybody is that they are nice to the police officers. Uh, conference committee has worked incredibly hard over the last year to try and minimise the inconvenience of the security. Uh, we know there are very strong views on either side, but the conference hotel, which this year is the Grand, has been brought within that whole island site to try and minimise the disruption in terms of searches and going between fringe venues and the conference centre. Security is on FCC's agenda for each meeting, and the general position that the feedback we're getting from everyone is that they want to feel safe, but we recognise that the real issue that does concern some members is accreditation. There are a number of questions on accreditation, and uh, I'll come to those and explain where we've got to and how we got there when I come to answer those questions. Uh, conference last autumn passed a a motion. It called on a uh, conference committee, as is set out in the question, to negotiate some security arrangements for future conferences to protect privacy of members' personal data, respect parts of the Constitution, but also, obviously, importantly, ensure that there is security at conference. So if I can outline some of our uh, efforts in relation to accreditation. Uh, it's going to be a slightly long answer because rather than repeat some of the things I would have said in my report, I'll give them as part of the answer. Uh, our efforts have really been twofold. Uh, there's been quite general discussions on security that's required for this conference with Sussex Police and the Home Office, and then very specific discussions with the Home Office regarding the whole principle of accreditation and the need for accreditation. Uh, the specific arrangements for security at this conference were arrived at after quite a full and detailed risk assessment of both the risk and the threats to conference. Uh, this included a number of meetings. Uh, I have attended over 10 meetings uh, in relation to security at uh, Brighton Conference, these ranging from uh, a couple of hour meetings to full day meetings. Uh, and FCC, as a, as a whole, has made it quite clear, and Conference has made it quite clear, that they have real concerns over the need and effectiveness of accreditation. Uh, unfortunately, accreditation seems to be part of the general makeup of security at party political conferences. Uh, it's also used at other events, such as the Olympics, I understand, but it, it's, it's become into the psyche of conference security measures generally. FCC has made it clear that we weren't convinced as to the need for accreditation. Uh, under the party's con constitution, uh, FFAC, the Finance Committee, has responsibility for financial and resourcing issues. And given this, Conference Committee referred accreditation to FFAC for their views. Uh, there is a risk if we didn't have accreditation. There was a risk in terms of finances, the risk in terms of resources, and FCC felt it was only right to ask FFAC's views on this. Uh, the second part in relation to accreditation is that we've made our view clear to the Home Office in meetings with the relevant section of the Home Office uh, what our view is and how we want to, what we think of accreditation. They've decided to carry out a review of accreditation at party political conferences. Uh, this is due to report later this year and the recommendations uh, should be in place for next year. But we will carry on and continue to, yes, negotiate a safe and secure conference for everyone that attends, but making it quite clear what our views are on accreditation and its effectiveness. Thank you, Andrew. Gareth, do you want to have a supplementary? Um, yes, please, Chair. Thank you very much, Andrew, for that very, very full answer. 
The motion that conference passed last year condemned the accreditation system, yet we still find ourselves in the position of having it not for spring conference, where there is um, also a considerable security risk, but still for autumn. My concern was and is around insurance, given the, the security implications of having spring conference without an accreditation system. Was uh, what Andrew was what you were saying in your reply there? that you felt it was better for FFAC to um, take a, a view on the financial aspects because FCC was unconvinced by the argument some people um, were giving that to have no accreditation would equal no insurance? I think certainly insurance came into discussions, but I don't, this is not a debate, not a discussion in my view over insurance and whether or not insurance was available, wasn't available. It was referred to FFAC because there was clear police advice that we should have accreditation. Uh, FCC were not, and the wording of the motion was, we were not convinced as to the need for accreditation, but recognised that there are financial risks if we don't follow police advice. And so consequently, it was referred to FFAC as constitutionally. They, they are responsible for finances of the party, and that includes conference. Thank you, Andrew. We're now moving to question two, two. from Zoe O'Connell, which is also laid out on page three. Mm. Andrew. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to, although Zoe may very well have a supplementary on the first part, I'm going to hopefully say to Zoe, I've, I've dealt with your little A, A1 in, in the last answer and then move on to the other answers. I hope, I hope that, that's OK, although do feel free to, to, to come back on that. In relation to guarantees of uh, help, personal information held by police and third parties, uh, the third party you refer to is Events Force, and they uh, are the... Uh, they're, they're the people who run the, the conference, our own conference system. Uh, all their data is held on a secure data server. It's hosted by a data hosting company. But the important thing is the Liberal Democrats own all the rights and the title to this data, and no one apart from Liberal, Liberal Democrat Conference Office has access to it. Uh, the... The data that's necessary for accreditation is transferred to a police system, which is a police accreditation system, which runs across all the three political parties. Uh, access is only available to that, to those police officers who work at something called the National, you have to excuse me reading this, uh, the National Accreditation Team. Uh, plus a couple of officers from the local police force. So it's not part of the wider police network. It is a stand-alone system uh, with a very limited number of police officers having access to determine the position around accreditation. Uh, any member of the party can ask for their data to be deleted from the accreditation system. What that will mean if they do that is at the next conference, if, say, if we have accreditation, they'll then have to complete all the details again. Those members who were accredited last time round and have gone through the system this time will have noticed that it was a lot quicker, far less data to input. Uh, if you ask for data to be deleted, that is no problem whatsoever, but obviously you just have to re-enter re it again. In relation to... Uh, B, uh, I've, I hope I've sort of dealt with that, that in terms of uh, my previous answer to Gareth. In relation to your C, how many people refused accreditation at this conference, Zoe? Uh, at this stage, and I have to say at this stage, because people are still registering and will try and register over the next few days, at this time, nobody, no party members have been refused accreditation. But just to make it clear that the police don't refuse accreditation. The police recommend to the party that we don't admit them. The police have not, at this stage, recommended to us that anybody should be refused admittance. So it hasn't got to a stage of us having to say, 
yes or no. The police at this stage haven't recommended it to anybody. Thank you, Andrew. Zoe. Um, thank you for the detailed answer. Um, there was a special opt-out exemption process um, that was put in place. Um, could you tell us where that was advertised and how many people used it? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to slightly struggle struggle with this. And I, I, don't, I don't want to sort of say, well, that wasn't anything to do with me. Uh, but there was a, spe uh, a special process put in place uh, for members who had real concerns about uh, I their previous identity, whether it's through the trans community or others who had fears over the security of their, of their data because of previous names and previous identity. That, that was organised through uh, the party, party president and uh, that, that system was run. I understand that no one opted to go through that system, uh, but I will check that and make sure that the, 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 de the details are both emailed to you, Zoe, but also appear in, in, my, in my written report. I, I wasn't part of that, 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 that process.